Oh, it's nice seeing the idea of marriage being treated with such respect. Loving, released in 2016 and is directed by Jeff Nichols, who's behind such films like Mud and Midnight Special. And this film stars Joel Edgerton, Ruth Naga, and Nick Kroll. And this film was recommended to me by one of my longtime subscribers and friends and co-workers, Kristen Weissner. <laughs> She requested her own theme song, and I gotta say I love my rendition. Loving tells the true story of Richard Loving and Mildred Loving in their pursuit to maintain their interracial marriage. This is the 1960s, and the state of Virginia does not like the idea of interracial couples. So they're excommunicated for 25 years, but the case is being appealed by Nick Kroll. And the biggest recognition that this film got was Ruth Nega was nominated for Best Actress at the Academy Awards. Ruth Nega is a, an amazing actress, a brilliant actress. Like, she needs to be talked about way more because she is amazing in everything. If any of you are watching Preacher, she plays the character of Tulip, which is a better character rendition in the TV show, in my opinion, than the actual comic book. Heck, she was even in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Ugh. But she was still really good in that show. She is such a captivating actress that whenever she is on screen, you're just, your mind and your eyes just focus and fixate on her. But this film is 50-50 is with Ruth Nega and Joel Edgerton. This is their story and I love Joel Edgerton's characterization of this character. He is shy, he is introverted, he's, he's really scared. He just wants to have this nice fixated status quo in his life. He doesn't want conflict. He doesn't understand why there is conflict in his life. He's marrying this woman. They're not harming anyone. He loves this person. They're having children together. What harm is it doing to anyone? He's actually kind of a simpleton. He doesn't understand the idea, especially around this time of the 1960s and civil rights movements, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, people of the the status. He doesn't understand, nor does he care. He just wants to go to work. He's a bricklayer. He just wants to lay brick, and he wants to come home and spend the nights with his wife. Just a nice, simple life. They're not harming anyone. They're just two people who are falling in love with each other and want to have that vow of marriage with each other. And I mean it at the top of this review when I said it's nice to see the idea of marriage being treated with such respect. Because in the last couple of decades, marriage has been the big topic. Especially when we get to top Topics like this, interracial marriage or homosexual marriage. It's just not right. It's not natural. <laughs> uh, just shut the fuck up with that mindset. The message behind this movie and the message determined by the actual case, the Lovings versus the state of Virginia back in 1967, stated that marriage is an inherent right to all humans. Regardless of your sexual orientation, the color of your skin, you have the right to enter into a marriage with someone else. And that's what this film is portraying. Just a nice, simple, harmless family just trying to live their lives. And heck, even when the state of Virginia excommunicates them, they say, okay, I don't wanna ruffle any feathers. Sure, we will leave the state. They grew up in Virginia. They want to stay in Virginia. Their family, the rest of their extended family is in Virginia. The themes, the concept behind this film, the real life story of these two people. They were actual people and I loved at the end of the credits they actually showed some of the pictures that they actually took in the movie itself. Just with the real life people, I love it when movies do that. Just adds to the gravitas of the film. The film as a viewing experience, it, it felt like it dragged a lot. There's not a lot of talking. There's a lot of shots of just watching these two characters just staring like out into a field or staring at each other or kind of just staring up at the sky just having them self-reflect on the situation that they are in which provides the audience with amazing performances having the camera that close on your face you have to be completely dialed into those characters and these two definitely are they are brilliant in these roles as a viewing experience that can make the film feel a little long <laughs> this film is just over two hours it felt like two and a half, three hours as I was watching it. Which doesn't deter the importance of this movie and of this story and of the performances. Just, you know, from a directing standpoint, the pacing of this movie felt very slow and it, 
I was checking my watch a couple of times. Not because I wasn't interested, it's just that nothing was really happening in a lot of the scenes that I was watching, so I was like, how much longer do we have here? Let's just, let's get to the court case. And actually behind that concept, this film presents this situation and this court case and these two real life people in a very interesting and not stereotypical way. I feel like in any standard Hollywood film, we would see these two see each other, actually start their relationship with each other, and then see them progress over time, maybe have a couple of callbacks to when they first met each other, and then we go all the way to the court case, and then there's some big triumphant victory and swelling music at the end. We actually don't get that at all. This movie starts, and these two are already a couple, and actually she just announced that she is pregnant. So we are starting in the midpoint of their relationship with each other, which I think is innovative storytelling. I like that decision. Again, the pacing, it felt long. This is a very dramatic film, and it's a very serious situation, so when they tried to sprinkle in just a few dabs of humor with a couple of external characters, it actually kind of felt out of place. Like, I know they put these characters in here just for comedic effect, or to say a funny line, but because we've had so many minutes of just straight up, just serious staring off into nowhere, or serious situations, or the threat of hate crimes being committed, that when we get these little small jabs of humor, we go, oh, okay, yep, I'm sorry, that was funny, but it's totally being missed on me right now. But I think from an acting standpoint and the importance of this story standpoint, I think it's absolutely brilliant and it's a beautiful story. These two actors give tremendous performances. Ruth Nega, she is one of the best actresses working today. Joel Edgerton, he is a quiet little actor too. Not a lot of people talk about him. He's in one of my favorite movies of all time, Warrior, and he's amazing in that one too. He's he's a fantastic actor. When you're looking for a tour de force when it comes to acting performances, I think you're gonna like this movie. I'm gonna give Loving four out of five Blu-rays. That's good, It's good. And I'm not ashamed to admit that when this movie was done, I rolled over in bed and started cuddling with my wife because it's such a sweet story. Just grabbed her hand and fell asleep. Oh. I love her. All right, everyone, now comes my favorite part in my videos where I randomly select which movie I'm gonna be watching next, so let's take a look. Yes, I have actually been wanting to watch this movie again for so long. Walk the line. Johnny Cash. I love Johnny Cash. Played by Joaquin Phoenix, who is one of my favorite actors working today. The new Joker himself. Foo, that's gonna be interesting. But I've been meaning to watch this movie again. I've just I've dove in to the whole anthology of Johnny Cash. I listen to him at, at least once every couple of days. I love his music. I love, he's just, he's a storyteller when he performs. The songs that he plays, he's telling a story. He's not just performing a song to perform it. And I know this movie came out around the time that Jamie Fox's Ray came out, so Joaquin Phoenix, I felt, kind of got snubbed at the Oscars because Jamie Foxx won the Oscar for Ray, and they're not going to give the Oscar to another person who basically is in the same movie, just a totally different music genre. But I remember really liking this movie, Reese Witherspoon I remember liking. I'm excited to check it out again. So thank you very much, Kristen, for the recommendation. If any of you have recommendations of films that you want me to review on here, please leave your comment below this video or go to my Facebook page, my Instagram, or my Twitter. Leave your recommendation there, and if I have access to it, I will watch, review it, and give you a shout out on the channel. So everyone, have you seen the movie Loving? What did you think about it? Or if you've never seen it before and you stumbled across it because of this video, please comment below this video, let me know what you thought about it. And we are getting closer to hitting 1,000 subscribers by the end of 2019, so if you like what you saw here, hit that subscribe button, and if we hit 1,000 subscribers, I will torture myself and record myself torturing myself while watching Arachnophobia. And that's gonna be a lot of fun for you. So everyone, I will see you next time with my review of Walk the Line. So in the meantime, be well, be good to each other, and go watch a movie. Take care, guys.